The Republican push to restrict the vote and the Democratic push to expand it is shaping up to be one of the fights of our time. It's something we have been covering extensively on this show. In a moment, we'll look at the news coming out of Georgia today. Spoiler alert, it's really bad. At the federal level last week, though, the, White, the House passed a sweeping voting rights bill, H.R. 1. We were talking about it all last week. And every indication is that the Senate Republicans are going to stand in the way of that bill becoming law. Surprise, surprise. Without Congress, a real change will be hard Will, will be uh, real change will be hard to come back. But yesterday, President Biden took one step to push back. The president signed an executive order that's designed to help more people register and more people vote. And joining me now is Maxim Thorne. He's the managing director of the Andrew Goodwin Foundation, which is named for a civil rights martyr who was killed in Mississippi. The foundation promotes youth engagement and also access to, ballot, to the ballot box. The White House uh, called the president's order an initial step. I think, you know, it... You can't get everything in an executive order. But what effect will this executive order actually have? I hope it has momentum. Thank you so much, Jarlina, for, for, for this opportunity. Uh, you got to, So I think about this as Andy's legacy. You mentioned Andy Goodman, our namesake. And think about the momentum that happened when he, James Earl Cheney, and Mickey Schwerner were assassinated by white supremacists in Georgia when they were trying to register African Americans or Black Americans to vote. Within a year, within less than a year, uh, we got the Voting Rights Act. I think that we are living in a time of lots of momentum. We're dealing with three viruses, voter suppression, COVID-19, and systemic racism. But I think we also have the resistance to those viruses. And one of them is this emergency order, this, this executive order by President Biden. And so it has the chance to gain momentum and have all of us focus on our democracy and the threats that are being posed to our democracy by all three of those viruses. So as you said, we have, we're fighting against three viruses and this executive order uh, has the ability to get momentum for the issue of expanding access to the ballot box. Um, but what can you actually do without Congress, right? They passed HR1 in the House, but everyone knows the makeup of the Senate. I mean, we, we learned through the Obama administration. Anybody surprised by this? They, don't, they, they weren't paying attention during the Obama administration in terms of the obstruction. Um, so realistically, how do you do this uh, in the Congress as the way it's made up? Right. So I don't want at all to diminish how great it is to finally have a president that will do an executive order to start the momentum of us uh, doing things that would create greater access. Uh, and so I think about our constituency. So you know that we focus on young people's right to vote and particularly young people of color's right to vote because they're under attack by white supremacists, by these uh, bad actors across the country that would like to suppress the vote and in fact, undermine our democracy. So President Biden has this executive order that, that allows all of the agencies of government to begin to think in the next 100 days about what they can do to expand access. So for example, when I was in college, mm -hmm. uh, or when you had to apply for financial aid as I had to do, uh, you had to register for selective service. Selective service, 18 year olds mm -hmm. in America have to do this if you're gonna be eligible for financial aid or even as, as a matter of, 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 of our policy. So we know how to register every 18 year old in this country. Why isn't it that the federal agencies can also say when you register for selective service, you register to vote wherever you are. So, so th there are some really broad changes that are possible uh, by the federal government. However, your point is well taken. We need Congress, of course, uh, to have a new Voting Rights Act, HR1, and of course the John Lewis uh, Voter um, Advancement uh, Act, because these things uh, codify into law the protections, for example, were gutted by the Supreme Court in the Shelby case. And I think by restoring that and being cognizant of what we are now all cognizant to, which is we have systemic racism in this country. There may have been a few decades that people forgot, but certainly the murder of George Floyd and the heinous tactics mm. that Republicans and others uh, uh, attempted to do in the last uh, year, whether it was during the primary, during the, the November 3rd elections or in the Georgia runoffs, that makes us aware that these folks are really intended 
to destroy our democracy, whether they have to do it by coup, insurrection, or the passing of these 253 now and counting voter suppression laws. Now, now one last fact on this. Last year, we all knew we had a record number of voter suppression laws introduced. That was the record of all years of voter suppression laws, 2020. Zerlina, today we have seven times as many voter suppression laws that have been introduced. 253, 50 or more in Georgia alone. This is serious. And if we really love our democracy, we have to make sure this doesn't happen. I mean, it's such an important point about um, the democracy, because I think when we talk about voter suppression on this show, I want folks to know that this is not a partisan issue for me. Voter suppression is not partisan. Voter suppression is being done by partisans in this particular moment. But I want everybody to be able to vote. That's the whole point of the thing. Um, so in terms of some of the structures that are, are, are in place preventing uh, change, you know, one of them is the filibuster in the Senate. And, you know, we've been talking on the show about the history of the filibuster, uh, its connection to Jim Crow and that era um, where, you know, our rights were being suppressed and the filibuster was in place to block uh, much of that advancement. In terms of voting rights, is it possible to get anything big and substantial done with the filibuster in place? I think it's going to be very tough. And, I, and I'm hoping that pro-democracy people, and I love your frame, this is not a partisan, it's not a tribal issue. You know, Andy Goodman, Mickey Schwerner, and James Cheney were killed by Democrats. Let's be clear. So we are against voter suppression, whether it's done by Democrats historically, or whether it's done by Republicans today, or by whoever, or, or by, and, you know, uh, 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 you know th these white supremacist bigots. Um, however, we have to understand what that the filibuster is, is part of Jim Crow's legacy. So I think it's going to be really difficult. And we've seen, even with the, the, the COVID relief bill, just think about this. Uh, not a single Republican voted for that. So it's still tribal, right? So that's a reality. But there are things that, that I think, and I'm optimistic here, that I'm hearing from Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema, who are the two more moderate uh, Democrats, that leads me to think that, that they can keep a, a filibuster, not this particular version of filibuster, but there are things that you can do uh, to ensure that the minority is not conquering the majority. Right now, we are having such an mm -hmm. obstructionist time uh, in the Senate because of the way the filibuster is operating. And I think you can keep a filibuster, meaning that you want to make sure you have a more than just a simple majority, but you don't have to get to that 60. You also can do things to make sure you are ensuring a debate. So right now, you don't even have to turn up right. the filibuster. If you're serious about filibustering and you want to hear a debate, then sit your butt down and listen to the debate and argue to the debate. Don't disappear and pretend this is right. not pure obstruction. I think with those kind of tinkering, where I believe we can get to, to a majority, right. we can do it. Yeah, I think it's important for folks to understand that it is not the filibuster of old. There's no one standing up and reading the dictionary. Uh, they send an email. Uh, and, yeah. and, and and so things are blocked without, you know, folks having to stand up in front of a camera. Max and Thorne, thank you so much for being here tonight and please stay safe. You too. Thanks. Georgia Republicans are one step closer to restricting the right to vote despite efforts by Democrats and voting rights advocates. Today, state lawmakers